All right, guys, today we're going to talk about why I think my EDC for the summer is fire. Now, without any further ado, we're going to go over pretty much everything that I'm going to be rocking this summer for everyday carry and EDC. And there is actually quite a bit to it, but without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so first off, we're going to start off with what I usually wear. Now, for the summer, as I've kind of um, learned the hard way, usually in Alaska, it is actually pretty warm, or at least for someone who's used to negative 30s, negative 40s, you know, 80, 90 degrees uh, above, um, it is pretty darn toasty. So a lot of my summer apparel and wear is not only designed to be active, like for hiking, running, trail running, doing like high activity stuff, but it's meant to be breathable, keep the sun off of me, and basically just serve those two purposes. You know, be breathable, keep me comfortable, and just be comfortable to wear. I think another thing that's really important that a lot of people, I think, mistake about Alaska, at least central Alaska, like where I live, um, during the summer, and even like right now as we're like not really in summer, but kind of late spring, but uh, like the sun literally barely goes down. Even right now, it barely goes down, but during the heart of summer, like the sun never sets. So whenever you're doing things outside, it's really important to consider like wearing layers that she you from the sun so that's for me like the biggest thing so first off starting with the apparel like what I wear is the Q or um, is primarily Q um, uppers so stuff like what I'm wearing right now this is their Gila LS Pro I want to say hoodie um, but also things just like their other hoodies this is like a lightweight merino wool hoodie I really love Q's um, camo patterns so that's one of the big reasons why I like rocking their stuff but also too they make a lot of nice base layers that are super super breathable and uh, once again they serve that purpose of keeping the sun off of you but also maintaining a very loose breathable um, clothing or fit so that's what I really like about them and that's why I rock them a lot in addition to it's kind of impossible to show here but usually what I rock for my pants is some form of Thiel Raven what I'm actually wearing right now is a little bit more like comfort oriented these are a discontinued Thiel Raven I want to say it's their like day trail um, pants but they're basically like a stretch pant and they're just nice overall um, super comfy and they can't carry as much as the Vita Pros that I usually wear but for the most part during the summer, I will wear some form of Vita Pro and I've done quite a few videos. I'm actually going to be doing another video here soon talking about why I still love the Vita Pro pants because I think they are some of the most unbeatable EDC adventure bushcraft um, just wilderness pants out there because they hold a ton of stuff but are super comfortable, super usable. Um, and overall just awesome pants. Maybe not quite for winter, but definitely for summer for sure. All right, so like I said, Fiel Raven pants, Q upper, or you know, like uh, shirts and stuff like that. Now, what I will wear usually for a hat is just going to be like a Condor baseball cap. This one I just like because it's in multicam arid, and multicam arid is just a nice color. I am a big fan, if you don't know, of tans. So overall, just a fan of really light colors like these tans and browns and uh, yeah, earth tones for sure. So once again, as you guys can kind of tell with this Kiyo upper um, or you know shirt, very similar colors. And once again, the primary reason why I really like my light colors is because light colors do a lot better job at reflecting and dissipating heat so they don't get as hot as darker colors. I see a large push to, you know, like blacks, browns, you know, these darker, still earthy tones. But by and large, they actually tend to soak up a lot of heat and when you're trying to deal with a sun that is out 24 seven, no jokes, um, you know, it's really important to have something that's very comfortable and not uh, something that's gonna absorb a lot of heat. So in addition to this too, um, as far as things like glasses go, once again, because the sun is out constantly, I'll basically always have some form of glasses. These are my Oakley drop points, but I also have Oakley radar locks. These ones I've been a little bit more preferential to because they are multicam. I know that the multicam isn't a huge deal, but I just think it's really cool. I think it's pretty neat. And I like the fact that they're called drop points because that's kind of a knife term as well. So, you know, they, uh, they kind of fit the bill for me. They uh, check 
like that kind of second cool factor um, quite a bit. So they're multicam, they're drop points, but most importantly, they serve as shades. And you know, as you guys can tell, I'm not gonna wear them in the car that much because it's not that important, but you know, they work just fine. They're glasses. Okay, so now let's jump into some of the gear. All right, so now let's talk about some of the actual gear because that is pretty important. So first up, and the first part of the gear is going to be the firearm. Now for me, right now, I'm carrying my modded out Gucci Glock, so to speak. This is just a Gen 4 Glock 19 with, of course, an RDS on it and some aftermarket kind of just features to it. So that is the first piece up. But as far as the um, firearm rotation goes, I'm gonna be rocking, of course, the Glock 19 that you guys just saw. Also the Glock 19X and the 509, uh, sorry, the FN 509C. So that is going to be kind of my lightweight trail running gun that is supposed to be, you know, like as small or, you know, as reasonably compact as I really want to go. So that is the firearm rotation. Okay, next up is going to be knives. Now for knives, this one's probably gonna be the most broad spectrum, but things like the awesome Spyderco Manix 2 are going to be a part of this list. Also things like the Benchmade 273, the Spyderco Smock. Um, quite a few of my smaller knives tend to make rotation a little bit more um, in the summer because once again, a lot of my summer preferences are scaled or pared down. Now, this might change um, you know, if I'm doing something specific, going to hike, you know, a mountain or do something crazy, right? Then I might end up going for a little bit heavier duty knife, something like a Strider or, you know, a Adamus, like full-sized Adamus or even something that's even stronger than those. So, you know, my knife game is of course always on point, but uh, some of my more preferential um, options for the summer are going to lean towards a lightweight thin um, knives that are super carryable. Things like the Bug Out, the TRM Neutron 2, um, other knives like that, the Hogue Deca and such. So anyways, um, that is the kind of knife choice. Now for me, when it comes to flashlights, flashlights are one of the ones that are more arguable for me because once again, as I've mentioned multiple times, we have like endless sunlight here. So having a flashlight isn't always the biggest deal. Like it still is important and don't get me wrong, there are still like dark caves and stuff like that, you know? So you should definitely always have a flashlight, but if you're just talking about like going out and about and doing stuff, even at like 12 in the morning, it actually really doesn't matter because it's still, light enough for you to see out. It is like dusky, but it's not like pitch black. It's not even like just, you know, twilight. It's literally just dusk out. It kind of just, you know, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock turns into just endless evening until the sun rises properly again. So with that in mind, my flashlight choices are the Phoenix E35 and the Phoenix LD30. And I have a slight bit of preference to the LD30 because even though the E35 is brighter, like in lumen output, the LD35 is a little bit more easy and compact to carry and it still throws out 1600 lumens so it is still ridiculously powerful and once again when it comes down to lighting things up it would serve just fine now another one that i'm is a pretty crucial one for me is going to be the pen. The pen for me in most of the time, I would say is going to be the smooth precision pen tie bolt action pen here. And I think that this is probably like my 95% of the time or maybe, maybe like 60% of the time. The other 40% of the time it's going to be my big idea design tie click pen. I'm not as large a fan of it, but they're still both titanium, incredibly lightweight and write really well. So I don't really have any problems with them at all. All right, next two up are going to be the lighter and the wallet. So for me, my lighter, of course, is just gonna be a classic Zippo. I keep these guys topped off and ready to rumble at any time. And then I have a top sider quick draw for my wallet. And of course the quick draw just means that I have a couple um, cards in the back. So things like licenses, student IDs, um, stuff like that, just stuff that you regularly use um, is in the back for me. So that is the kind of uh, ancillary stuff. 
I also occasionally, not every time, but will carry a pry bar. So things like my titanium pry bar or some things that I also really like are these little Maritac pry bars. These are actually made out of like D9 tool steel, but these guys are really handy, really nifty, just like a small little pry bar that you can throw in your pocket, totally forget about, and then use to do whatever you need to. And I really like how thin and uh, small they are in nature, so it makes them super easy to like jam into things. And basically, I get a lot of comments of like, why do you carry a pry bar? Why is it useful? You know, your fingers can do a lot of things but one of my favorite things about smaller pry bars like that one that are finger sized is it's nice to just be able to have a little pry bar you can put in places that you wouldn't want to put your fingers so you know places where you know they might get pinched or crushed you know it's cheaper to replace a nine dollar you know piece of hardened tool steel than it is one of your fingers right so that is one of the primary reasons i have a pry bar all right, next one up and one that I don't actually have on me because it goes through the rotation. Once again, if I'm wearing lightweight kind of, you know, trail running, you know, stretchy pants, so to speak, I won't often carry it, but it's going to be the multi-tool and you guys should be very well familiar now with the multi-tool that I usually carry. And that is just the G10 Charge Plus by Leatherman. Hasn't changed for, I think like a couple of years, but I really like it. Mine is in the earth color tone or color pattern and uh, love it to death. Once again, I don't always carry it if I'm wearing lighter weight, more breathable pants, and I will ditch it. But by and large, once again, like I would say 80% of the time I'm wearing my uh, Fjell Raven Vita Pro pants. And so if I'm wearing those, then I will definitely have my um, charge in there. And then lastly, of course, you have to have some form of a water bottle. This one is just a heavily stickered up and some of the stickers are kind of peeling off, but heavily stickered up hydro flask I've had for years once again, and, uh, you know, just does the job well. So no real complaints there. All right, guys, that is all for my summer EDC. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.